YouTube, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Tink. That's M I Z Z, not M I S S. Yes, and we are here today to talk about Love and Hip Hop, Season Five, Episode Three, Daddy's Home. But before I get into that, I gotta give I gotta give my two church announcements. My first one is I want to send a special prayer out to all the citizens in Houston, especially in the Greens Point area, and actually all the areas that was hit hard by the flooding waters today, and to all the people that were stranded, all the people that left their cars abandoned, all y'all, it was crazy out here. I'm sending my prayers out to everybody. Apparently, I hear that it's supposed to be an 80% chance of rain tonight. No, I wasn't able to get to work from my 3 to 11 shift, but I'm going to work, going to work for the overnight shift. So, Lord, give me strength. You already know. But I want to send a, a prayer out to everybody that's on the roads, everybody that was affected, all the families, all the children, everybody, all the businesses, people that couldn't get to work, all the banks, just everybody out here in the city of Houston. I want to send a special prayer out to them and just to ask all my YouTube subscribers, wherever you are, if you could send a special prayer out to us as well. And all the YouTube subscribers and uh, YouTubers in Houston, my prayers are with y'all as well. So that's my first church announcement that I had to get out there. Also... I want to send a special shout out. I want to spend a, spend, send a special shout out to my girl, Miss Stephanie. Hey, girl. If you didn't know, now you know. My girl, Stephanie, came out to the uh, Veil Lounge last night for um, to support my homegirl, Brandy Wright, and me and all the other artists that was in, at the event, models, fashion designers, basically the whole Everybody that was there, she came out to support, and thank you so much for coming, girl. It really, really meant a lot, a lot to me. I'm going to have that video out, but I just got to do a lot of editing because I did a, took a lot of pictures and I did a lot of videos and stuff, so that will be out soon, so y'all be on the lookout for that, but I definitely want to give a shout out to her and say, thank you, girl, thank you, thank you for coming. It was amazing, amazing. If y'all seen the pictures on my Facebook and my Instagram, you see that she came out and we took some lovely pictures together. All right, y'all, let's get into this Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5, Episode 3, Daddy's Home Review, because I got to get to work tonight, okay? Okay. All right, it picks up where we left off, where we see Tammy and, you know, the fake-ass Tam Betty Bob getting into it. She threw a drink, looked like, you know, she reached out and tried to touch her with them Jesus hands or whatever, and, you know, snatched the hair up. D. Smith looking like, the fuck? D. Smith, why you ain't tell your girl to chill out? Like, I'm sorry, D. Smith. I, I would have been side-eyeing you. Like, you just sat there and let, you know, Tan Betty Bob come after her. Like, come on now. You could have said something. I'm just saying. I'm talking about ladies. Chill out. Girl, you you already knew your friend had it out for Tammy. Like, you could have said something to your homegirl and tell her to chill the hell out. This was a business meeting. Not all that drama shit. So, I'm sorry, D. Smith. You was wrong for that. Mm, you a part of that, shall I say. You are a part of that. I understand you can't control what your friends do, but you still should have told your friend what was good. You were a part of that. So let's go and get to some more shit. All right, so after that whole thing and, you know, that fake-ass tan baby by the time I, she pulled out my hair. Bitch, you better be glad that's all the fuck she pulled out because I'm pretty sure if them um, security guards weren't there, she would have popped your ass in that damn fake-ass tan crow beak of yours, bitch. That bitch would have been broken. That probably would have made your ass rethink about some shit. I'm just saying, girl. Anyways... Um, we see, <clears throat> excuse me, Jessica Counterfeit Dime meeting up with Tierra. She's having this little sit down because she feels bad and she basically want to say, look, my name is Bennett. I ain't in it. Let me tell you what the hell happened. Because, you know, Tierra was like, you know, um, I was, I haven't heard from Cardi Red and she was the one who invited me. So, you know, what was up? So basically, basically Jessica Counterfeit Dime told her what it is. Look, she invited you. This happened. Uh, you know, I ain't know it was going to go left like that. I feel bad. Okay. But what it is. And Tierra, girl, you just started singing like a little canary girl about everything with KK and the damn hood um, scarred shit with damaged ends. And I'm like, girl, was it true what KK said? Did you really snitch on them, girl? Because, girl, I don't think Jessica County for Dime needed to hear all that. That had nothing to do with her. As far as you and, you know, the damn um, hood scar with damaged ends relationship is concerned. I guess. Um, Jessica Counterfeit Diamond is just basically sucking it up, like, really, girl? And then ask her, you know, are you fucking him? She's like, yes, I am. It's like, oh, shit. And then, you know, she's talking about, well, you know, the dick is high. Girl, please. If the dick was so high, girl, you wouldn't have been fighting Tommy about it. Just like you said, you could get any man you want. So if that dick was so high, you could have found you a better man that gave you that good dick and probably treat you better than this damn hood-ass scar with damaged ends looking nigga is doing. Okay? Stop it, girl. Anyways, she talks about the whole sit down and Jessica counterfeit down was like, look, I don't know if you should go or whatever, something ain't in the water, ain't clean about that girl. I don't know. But, you know, she's just basically hoping for the best as far as, you know, I guess Tierra's situation is. I guess, girl. Let's go get to some more shit. All right. 
So after that, we see the damn hood scar with damaged ends going up to see Stevie, you know, his uncle, you know what I'm saying? To talk about his whole situation, come to find out he got some legal issues, he got caught with some marijuana or whatever, so he might have to do some time and stuff, so he just worried. He want, you know, all the women, or should I say everybody to come together and support his ass and his time and need, but he's sitting up here being a fuckboy and lying to the two women that he claims that he care about, about who he fucking every time and <laughs> nigga bye. Anyways, Stevie's talking about, you know, your boy's back, he's happy, whatever, in Atlanta, he just want to focus on this whole damn um, movie and being a better father, okay, anyways, um, he tells him, look, you have to make a choice, me and Jocelyn and Mimi, we had our little thing, I had to make a choice at the end of the day, basically, it's like, Tommy and Jocelyn are like with the wild sex, but Tierra and Mimi are like the good wholesome, so, you know, the hood scar with uh, damaged ends is talking about, look, I don't know yet. I Basically, I ain't ready to make my decision yet. He wants his cake and eat it too. A.K.A. he wants to be a fuckboy and these dumbass bitches is going to basically let him. I guess. Why did you have this whole conversation with Stevie anyways if you didn't, wasn't ready to make that type of decision? Pure fuckboy dish. Hood, hood scar, go to him. Go. Just go somewhere. Anyways, let's go and get to some old shit. All right. After that, we see Walkoff and Tammy. Tim went to go get her good dick from her husband right on, girl, because she was stressed out about, you know, what happened with that damn tan Betty Bob looking bitch and D. Smith or whatever. And I went Walker Flocker, even though, you know, he's like, look, I got to handle, you know, business and I got to handle family. You know, it's got to be that good dude, you know, got to be that daddy, you know what I'm saying? But I felt what he was saying, talking about, why are we having this discussion about people nobody care about? And I'm like, okay. Because, bitch, don't nobody care about no damn tan, whack-ass Betty Bob with that damn Salem bedazzle suit look like that shit was reject and try to, uh, you know, recreate Selena, make she rest in peace, because, bitch, you can never do it like her, okay? And don't nobody give a fuck about D. Smith, not saying it like that, but really don't want to give a fuck about her. We didn't really know who she was until she got on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I'm just saying. Anyways, so Tammy tried to tell her what uh, what went on. Basically, she felt disrespected because the old girl was coming after, you know, her and her man and her family. She don't play that. I don't, I don't blame you. And then she brings up this whole Black Man Magazine event, asks uh, Walker to come, says she um, she invited D. Smith to come. You know, Walker's like, look, I'm going to try to make it, whatever. They had some type of conversation about being romantic, but hey, I guess, wasn't well, nobody really paying attention. I just felt Walker Flocker was saying, bitch, don't nobody care about no damn Tam reject Betty Bob, and don't nobody really know nor care about D. Smith. I'm just saying, let's keep it real. Anyways, let's keep it moving. All right, next we see Scrappy in the studio with that tan reject Betty Bob looking bitch, whatever. They jam into some tunes. And Scrappy quit trying to get his girl some damn credentials on her resume that we don't give a fuck about. Talking about she worked with 2 chains and worked with um, Rick Ross. Bitch, don't nobody give a fuck. Don't nobody like this hoe. I'm sorry. Anyways, they're all talking or whatever. She's happy about the busy stuff. Are you fighting with me? <laughs> bitch. He flirts with everybody. You just you 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 just another notch on his belt. You're not like Bambi, you're not like Erica Dixon, okay? I'm just keeping it real. Anyways, so Tan uh fake Betty Bob takes it upon herself to sit up here and tell Scrap what went on with the whole thing between Tammy and all of that stuff and talking about walk up cars, bitch. We get it, okay? And you know, as soon as uh Scrap was like, wait a minute, you know, Tammy's like family, you know, me and Waka Flock go back. Man, what the what? You know what I'm talking about? She you know, she pulled my hair like my real hair. Bitch, we get it, okay? We get it. We get it, bitch. Anyways. And, you know, I felt where Scrap was coming from. Scrap was like, well, hold on. Bump all that. What did you do to start this? Because you had to do something to get this reaction out of Tammy. And, you know, that's what she said. You know, I started saying stuff about her husband, about the whole transgender thing. First of all, and I am a fellow member of the LGBT community, and I'm proud of it. But my thing is, tan fake Betty Bob. What the fuck does Waka Flocka's whatever comment have to do with you. D. Smith didn't seem phased about it when she talked to Tammy, so why are you so pissed? Bitch, are you on the transgender team too? Are you about to transform? Are you in transformation? I just want to know because you seem very hell bent or is this your only storyline? Like you talk about Tammy claiming the fame was Walker. Is your claim to fame talking about an issue that ain't got shit to do with you because you're not even in our community? Or are you or are you just, you know, tucking it really well? I'm just saying. Bitch, bye. Anyways, Scrap wasn't really here for it. She's like, look, Tammy is like family. So, you know, because when she said you brought, when he said, not she, he, <laughs> no, he never know. Let me stop. When uh, the tan, Rejay, Betty, Bob brought up the whole Waka Flocka thing, how she brought, you know, brought that up. He was like, wait a minute. 
Bam, that's where it's at. You can't just be sitting up here saying stuff about people's relationships and all that and then get it. And you don't you don't know what reaction you're going to get, which is very true. So I'm sorry. Tan Betty by bitch, nobody was on your side. So bitch, you lost that one. You look stupid as hell, okay? Okay. And then she want to get mad about Bambi and stuff and bring up this whole Snapchat thing. Okay, as you can see, he still loves Bambi. And why are you mad if it's just business, bitch? What are you mad about? What is your issue with Bambi? It's just business, right? Girl, you better stop before Bambi busts you in that damn nose of yours and you just be sitting up here looking broke as fuck with that damn beak just hanging. You better stop, bitch. Anyways, that's how that situation went. Let's go and get to some more shit. All right, so we're at the Black Man event. You know, Waka Flocka showed up. Tammy, she looked really cute. I like that little thing on top of her head. She in the bang. I thought she looked really cute. And, you know, everybody's there. When we see Mimi and Chris and Arian show up or whatever... Um, they get on to this whole thing asking Jessica Counterfeit Dom about the whole situation. And Jessica Counterfeit Dom was like, look, I ain't got shit to do with that. Carly invited her ass. Okay, it is what it is. She basically said, look, that's, um, apparently, that's, a uh, scrap, you know, baby mama, uh, Stevie J cousin, whatever. And, you know, Mima's like, I know, I, I, some shit she said. I'm talking about these old hood rats. The next time I see Tommy and Tara, it's not going to be nice. Some shit she said like that. Mimi, don't want to get fucked, okay, girl? Don't want to get fucked. Don't want to get fucked. Anyways, um, because Chris was the one who brought it up to Jessica Diamond. Jessica Diamond basically cleared her name and said what it was. I'm like, I did not fight. You know, I, I didn't fight, which she didn't. She's like, you know, yeah, yeah, true, true. I'm like, Chris, hush. But I felt where Jessica Diamond was coming from. Bitch, clear your name. You ain't got shit to do with that. Yeah, you might have been there, but you ain't got nothing to do with it. Okay, especially with Carly Red Rooster ass, okay? Anyways, so after that whole situation, Tammy reveals the picture. She looks great. Waka Flocka looking like, mm -hmm. but it was so sweet to hear Waka Flocka, you know, comment his wife and everything, talking about his wife is the most beautiful woman on this earth. She had a baby. She still looks good. I thought that was so sweet. That was so sweet. When Tammy goes sit down, we see Deb. Deb. I want you to slap the shit out of Mona and the style that she keep giving you, girl, because that hair matching your outfits. I'm tired of it, girl. But I still love you, Deb. Anyways. Um, Deb, you know, basically says, look, Tammy, I'm proud of you, but you don't need to be fighting. So, basically, Deb know about the whole situation. So, Tammy tells the whole thing about, you know, that happened with the fake-ass Tan, Betty, Bob, and D. Smith. And as soon as, you know, Bambi hears the girl, um, you know, Betty Delusional Idol, what Bambi calls, she's like, hold up, are you serious? And then, you know, she says the whole thing about getting with Waka Flocka, not getting with him like that, but talking about Waka Flocka and all this stuff. You know, she felt bad, but hey, it is what it is. And, you know, Bambi like, what? And then she's like, I'm trying to, you know, kind of side-eye D. Smith because it's like, you know, I walked in like you knew this girl had some issue with me, but you didn't say anything. And I agree, I was side-eye D. Smith ass too. Bambi like, that bitch know, she, that bitch know what's, what's up. You know what I'm saying? Because she said that, uh, Tammy's talking about D. Smith didn't come out there because you know she invited her to the to the event to talk to Waka Flocka and that's my thing D Smith it was so if it was so much bothering you you could at least show up and at least talk to Waka Flocka face to face instead of taking all your anger and frustration out on Tammy I'm just saying okay but Tammy says she's gonna talk to her about it we shall see but Bambi don't seem phased by it. Bambi like man fuck this bitch okay not you know D Smith but you know Betty reject idol should I say Betty delusional idol that's what Bambi calls her and I feel like so we're going to see how that goes. Let's go and get to some more shit. So after the whole Black Man Magazine uh, thing or whatever, and I forgot to mention, Bambi, you know you wrong. So now you're talking about I ain't over scrapping until I'm completely over him. He going to do what I say. You know you wrong for that. And Tammy, don't be lying saying you punched a girl or did you really and we just didn't see it in the editing. I'm just saying, girl. Anyways, Stevie goes over to Mimi's house. Mimi's house look nice. You know what I'm saying? Mimi, stop moving. Just stop, okay? Anyways. Go over there, talk, you know, we was, um, Steve was talking about, you know, they're going to shoot the movie in Atlanta that's going straight to Netflix, and, you know, he just wants to be a better dad and be next to Eva, because he wanted to see Eva or whatever. You know, Eva's not there, Mimi's like, you know, she didn't come and all that, well, she's, you know, at, I guess, at some type of play date or whatever. Brings up the whole situation about where she's at in life, brings up the whole new boo, you know, says her name is Chris. Uh, Stevie thinking it's a guy, it's a girl, and Stevie like, what? So you gay now? Mimi is gay for pay. Don't give a fuck what nobody say. And for all y'all who want to know what a touch me not stud is, I'm not a stud, but I have talked to a touch me not before, and I had to let her know, baby, that's just not my preference, because I like to touch y'all minds. Touch me not is basically, they know they're a woman, they just don't like being reminded, they don't like being touched here and there. And I've known a couple of relationships with a touch me not stud, like I said before, a touch me not approached me before and tried to get at me, but I just had to keep it real world and say, baby, that's not my type, I like a lesbian, not a touch me not stud. Well, should I say I love studs, but you know what I mean. I can't do the touch me nots. I got the touch. I'm sorry. I have to be in control, too. We can both be in control, but 
it's got to be 50-50. I'm just saying, it is what it is. Um, But that's what Stevie's like, you know, do she put it down and all this stuff down the third and all this. And my thing, Stevie, don't be feeling some type of way about the fact that Mimi got a girlfriend now. After all the women you had running in and out of your damn bedroom while your kids were there and the kids you have yet to, or should I say, did not spend time with in the past that are older now, like Savannah and all of them, don't try to come at Mimi. I can't stand that's that double standard bullshit. Just because she gay, let her be gay for pay. As long as it ain't affecting your child, don't do it. Because apparently Mimi and Chris don't even sleep in the same bed when she comes over because, you know, Eva's still sleeping in the same bed and she has yet to basically tell the details of their relationship, which I don't blame her, but Stevie, you need to stop that shit. So that's basically how that situation goes. Let's go and get to some more shit. All right, next we see Scrap um, and Taylor working at the, you know, the damn broke bachelor pad. Um, and then that's when Bambi come knocking at the door and, and Taylor like, did you expect somebody? Like, no. And as soon as Taylor opened up the door, she said, are you here for Scrap? Here go Bambi. Are you here for Scrap? Bambi ain't trying to listen. Bambi just want to get the Scrap. You don't give a fuck about who. And Taylor like, okay. Yeah, Taylor just let, just let her walk on by. Don't that ain't got shit to do with you or whatever. So Taylor goes in the back. Bambi questions him out. You got an assistant, all of this stuff. Bambi, let the man do what he got to do. Life does not fall down because y'all are not together. Just because you went back into the wild don't mean that man life going to fall down. I'm just saying. So they go back and forth. Apparently, um, Scrap's been texting her and stuff. And Scrap, like, you know, I'm just saying how you doing, whatever. It's like, look, I miss her, but I ain't that damn crazy. She tried to give back the damn ring or whatever. He's like, nah, don't do that. Then they try to take the dog, Jilly. That shit cracked me up. Scrap talking about, man, where you going with Jilly, man? You ain't taking Jilly, man. Not Jilly. He's talking about, nah, let her come to me. <laughs> Put Jilly on that damn table. Jilly went straight over to Bambi. He's talking about, man, that, man that's a bitch, man. Y'all, them two was a chill. I was like, what do y'all really argue about? There's still some love there. There's still some real love there. Anyways, that's when uh basically Bambi was like, look, if you're going to be working with somebody who got beef with one of my homegirls and fighting with my homegirls, then we ain't finna be cool. You better check that shit, basically. Like, I ain't got time for the bullshit. You want us to be cool and all of this extra shit down the third, but you're going to be fucking with a bitch that got beef with my homegirls? It ain't. It, it ain't. It ain't what that is. So, you know... I feel like Bambi still got scrap wrapped around her finger. I'm just saying. So Bambi take the dog. He's talking about, well, since you want to take the dog, you better feed it too. Bambi take that damn dog food and walked out. Make, let the scrap look like, really? Yes, yeah, scrap. Bambi just took the damn dog and the dog food and went back into the wild, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, let's go get to some more shit. All right, next we see Tammy and D. Smith meeting up. And D. Smith, this is where I stopped liking you, girl. First and foremost... You was wrong on how you handled that situation with Tammy. Because regardless of, of not, Tammy was in the right to feel some type of way because at the end of the day, that's your friend. And for you to sit and say, well, Betty, don't be trying to defend what the fuck your damn fake-ass Betty Bob-looking bitch friend did, okay? Because she was wrong. She was wrong to be coming at her like that over what her husband said, okay? It is what it is. And to defend that says a lot about you, D. Smith. Talk about, you know, I thought we was working together. Talk about, no, we wasn't working together. You was trying to work with me. Okay, that little snobbish ass attitude, bitch, stop it. Talking about when I go, when I look in the mirror, I'm modeling. When I walk down the street, I'm modeling. I was modeling for a friend. Well, since you modeling for your friend, maybe your friend should have told you, bitch, you need to work on your motherfucking walk because that damn broomstick of a walk wasn't shit, okay? Stop it. Like, I'm sorry, D. Smith, I don't like you. I don't, I, don't, I, well, I don't like you in this sense. Maybe you might get back on my good side, but how you came at Tammy was wrong because Tammy had every right to feel the way that she did. Talking about, you know, oh, you was going to stick up for me? and you didn't even know me it ain't about the fact that she didn't know you like that it's the point of what's right and what's wrong and your fake ass crow beak looking ass bitch of a friend tan betty bop was wrong for that and you should you should just call it what it is so you know what i'm saying they go they argue back and forth or whatever she's talking about you lay with your husband y'all have pillow talk first of all did anybody teach you the definition of a relationship that's for one because you could be with somebody and have two different point of views have you been in a relationship or have you and Tan Betty Bob been in any kind of like committed or serious relationship to know that? Because if you did, you would know that. So to, you know, come down on her for that, boo, I wasn't feeling that at all. So they go back and forth. They basically ain't getting nowhere. And Tammy just basically like, look, I ain't got time to deal with this and walks off or whatever. She started talking about her wig. And I forgot to mention Bambi, you was wrong for that. Talking about that fake Dora Explorer wig. You was wrong for that. Anyways. As they walk off or whatever, she's talking about, yeah, my hair is here. You know, why don't you take that off? And then that's when um, uh, Tammy turned around, bitch, she was petty and started shaking her titties in front of, um, you know, uh, what's her name? D. Smith. You was wrong for that, Tammy. You was petty. I understand you was in the moment, but that was wrong. But again, D. Smith, girl, bye. 
Bye, bitch, because I understand you are producing all of it, but don't nobody know who the fuck you are until you came on this show, so stop acting like you better than somebody else. Regardless if Tammy stuff might make it to Kmart or Walmart, people still knew her longer than we knew about your ass, okay? Stop it. Anyways, let's go on to some more shit. All right, so next we see Scrap meeting up with this damn tan, fake, Betty Bop-looking bitch, and basically, Scrap wants the bitch to apologize for what she, uh, she did or whatever, and she's like, oh, no, I'm not gonna apologize or whatever, and they go back and forth, and, you know, Scrap's like, look, fuck it, if you ain't gonna apologize, I can't do business with you, because I can't deal with the beef and no drama between family and let alone the bam or whatever, you know, I ain't got time for that, for her ass to come up out the damn wildlife and start hitting me with them hooves. I'm just saying, stop calling Bambi a horse, okay, tan Betty Bop, but she bust you in that fucking beak, I'm just saying, and take your ass back to Barney's tree house or something. Get your ass back into Barney's what? Imagination bag and go some fucking way. Go find your brother, BJ. Or DJ, whatever the hell his name is. Anyways, so he walks off or whatever. She gonna talk about, that's why you ain't got no hits. Bitch, he got more hits than you. I can recall a uh, scrappy song before I can uh, recall your shit. I want you to stop it, okay? I told your ass. Take your ass back to PBS, Channel A, and Barney and Friends. Stop it, okay? Stop it, bitch. Damn. So then... She walk, he walks out or whatever, talking about deuces by, you know she was hurt, talking about, you fucked up or you something, you a piece of shit something, she said, but bitch, you mad, and that's what you get, bitch, fuck that, don't nobody want to work with no damn reject ass Betty Bob looking bitch like you, stop it, anyway, let's get to some more shit. All right, next we get to the sit down with, you know, Tiara and, you know, Tommy, you know, with her 32 flavor mug shot ass. Tommy looked cute. Tierra wasn't feeling like hugging scrap. Scrap, I don't care what nobody say. Your hood scar looking ass with damaged ends look better when your shit is braided, not when your shit is out. I'm just saying. Um, Tommy come up in there. She looked cute. You know, I like the little outfit or whatever, if I haven't said that already. They sit down and talk or whatever. And he's talking about, I basically brought you here and all of this stuff. And, you know, basically saying he don't want to choose. And they looking like, what? And at first, it was going fine as far as them agreeing with each other about, nigga, no, nigga, you need to make a choice. Scrap actually couldn't tell uh, Tommy that, you know, he loved her, which, Tommy, that's what you get. You should look stupid and you should feel stupid for coming after Tierra when you should have been coming after, you know, the damn hood scar with damaged ends, you dumbass. I'm just saying, especially, bitch, you need to stop uh, doing your facial expression like that and getting mad. Didn't you have plastic surgery on your face to cover up your identity? That shit might, you know, fuck up. Stop it, girl. Anyways. And, you know, she's crazy. She could fight. But I'm just saying, they both look dumb. And Tommy, to me, you look way more dumb. Tierra talking about, um, because, you know, he's been with the whole legal situation and stuff about, you know, he might be getting some time. And Tierra was like, what the fuck? Uh, look, you either going to make a choice. I ain't putting no money on your books. I ain't doing shit for you. I ain't holding you down. And you're not going to see your son now, Tierra. It would have been a difference. I could be on your side if you didn't want him to be around his son because of Tommy, you know, criminal history ass. But then again, you know, but still, you should know who's around your kid. But if you're only doing this because you want to be with him, you're wrong for that. And I can't stand men and women who do that shit. I'm sorry. No. So they start arguing, talking about, you sent this bitch. This bitch came up to my job, talking about, man, fuck your job, bitch. You know, all this stuff. Talking about, I work, you don't work with her. Tommy, girl, you better stop. Because at least, you know, well, then again, I don't know. Y'all look stupid going back and forth. Y'all really do. Like, I was like, y'all ain't finna get nowhere. He just admitted that he don't even love you. And he's he don't even want to choose between y'all two. He wants you both. And y'all get mad at each other? Y'all look stupid as fuck. Y'all need to be getting mad at him. I'm sorry. Y'all look dumb as hell. And that's basically how it goes off. We're going to see what happens, you know, next week. Anyways, y'all, like, comment, subscribe, and share. I am Miss Tink. That's M-I-Z-Z, not M-I-S-S. Yes, and the channel is Natural Pulses TV. You already know everybody that I, you know, shout out will be at the bottom bar below. And I also want to send a special birthday shout out to my boo, Crystal Tolliver. Happy birthday. You already know. And y'all have a blessed one. And please pray for everybody in the city of Houston during this flooding time, please. And y'all be safe out there. All right. Bye.